Hi, and welcome to my video series of Biotechnics Explained in 5 Minutes, where I explain a concept in biological technique in less than 5 minutes or so. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, hit that subscribe button. And I'm also present in An Academy, which is India's biggest online platform. So if you want to join An Academy, you can use my code AP10 to get a 10% discount. Now, in this installment, we're going to talk about the ion exchange chromatography. The chromatography is a simple technique to separate proteins, nucleic acids, and many other small molecules and biological materials from a complex mixture. Now, the basic from framework of chromatography is simple. The first step is equilibration. When you run the equilibration buffer through the column. Now, equilibration buffer makes the environment more feasible while the protein is passing through the column. So the equilibration buffer moves through the column and actually make the column wet. Then you have a binding step. When you add your protein sample dissolved in proper buffer, you have to ensure that the buffer does not denatch your protein structure because it might hinder with proteins binding capability. Next step is washing. In the washing step, all the non-specific interactions are washed away and only the interactions which are very specific and strong, those are retained. In wash buffer, we can use some compositions of like denaturant, which would get rid of all the weak in interactions, but not the strong interaction. In order to disrupt the weak interaction, we have to choose our denaturants very carefully. After that, the step is elution. In the elution step, you elute the protein of interest in a sequential fashion and collect it in the flow through. Now, analyzing the flow through, you can understand which protein is eluted. Now, let's take a proper example. And before that, let's see how ion exchange chromatography is unique. So, the ion exchange chromatography use specific anion exchange and cation exchange resins. These anion exchange and cation exchange resins are charged particles. So cation exchange resins are negatively charged, so it would attract all the positively charged around it, but initially it would be attracting all the positively charged things which are present in the buffer. But eventually when we put our annihilate, which is marked here in orange, it would replace the blue ones, which are the component of the buffer. And as a result, it would exchange the cation in expense of another cation. So that is why the cation exchange resin is negatively charged such that it can attract the cations. Simply, the cation exchange resin's example, which is widely used, is carboxymethyl cellulose. Carboxymethyl cellulose, the carboxy terminal, is a negatively charged thing and a negatively charged group which is attracting the cation towards it. In case of anion exchange resin, the core is actually positive and the annihilates are negatively charged which is replacing the negatively charged particle which is present, negatively charged ion which is present in the buffer. A great example of the anion exchange resin which is popularly used is DAE cellulose which has a positively charged in its um, tertiary uh, amine group. Now let's take a proper example in terms of protein. In terms of protein, we don't have one particular positive or one particular negative charge. A protein is a mixture of all of these. Depending upon the ratio of the positive and negative charge, it would interact differentially with the cation exchange or anion exchange resin. In this particular case, the protein has quite a lot of positive charge. That is why it is interacting with the cation exchange resin, which is negatively charged. Now let's say we talk about three or four different proteins and how they are actually eluted and how we can separate them. So for elution, we can use a, a gradient of a buffer or elutant buffer, which let's say it has NaCl. Now NaCl has sodium as a positively charged ion, which would really help us to elute the substance. The way elution work is your positive charge cation concentration is increasing. As a result, the protein is facing competition with these positively charged cation. And as a result, the protein is eluted. 
So we can increase the concentration of NaCl in a gradient like fashion and at different time points, different peaks or different fractions are collected. So let's try to understand it pictorially. Let's say these three proteins are bind to the cation exchange resin. Now these three proteins has a different degree of positive and negative charge. The blue one has the highest amount of positive charge followed by the orange and the green has the least amount of positive charge. So whenever we increase the sodium concentration a little bit, what happens the green one gets eluted first because it has the weakest possible interaction with the cation exchange resin. Then the orange one would be eluted. Still the blue one would be attached because it has quite a lot of positive charge which can still uh, interact with the cation exchange resin. We need very high concentration of salt or concentration of sodium to elute the blue protein in this particular example. That tells us that by changing the salt concentration in a gradient like fashion we can elute different protein at different time points and we can really fractionate them according to our need. And this is how ion exchange chromatography works. I hope this video was informative and really quick. So if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and do leave a comment how do you like my videos because it gives me a lot of positive motivation to make more such videos. Thank you.